Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I wanted to come on here and just talk with you about something. I was talking with someone today and it was just in my heart as I listened and I exchanged information. And one of the things that I think is really important is that we are wary of who is laying hands on you, who's praying with you, who you're fasting with. And guys, while this may sound like it's over the top, if you have a right relationship with the Lord, he's going to show you these things. He's going to open your eyes to it. If we are really honest with ourselves, the Lord opened our eyes to a lot of things really, really early, whether it was an intimate relationship, a platonic relationship, a church relationship, a business relationship, a work relationship. God shows us things early. Let's think of the disaster and the things that we went through in our lives, in relationships that happened, and we saw stuff out the gate straight up from the start. But what do we do? we will sort of talk ourselves out of it and say, oh, maybe that's not what it is. So I say all this to say, when it comes to things like this, spiritual things, the Holy Spirit's got us. It's just a matter of whether or not we are going to yield ourselves to him. Because guys, what's in my heart is that there's so many people who are at churches, whether they're in organized churches, home church, online and prayer groups, so many of them guys, they are individuals that, there's so many people that are, they are laying hands on individuals. They're prophesying, they're touching and agree with you. They're laying hands on your children. And these people have hatred and malice in their heart. Okay. They, some of them, they're angry with their husbands. They've been in, they have not been talking to their husband. They live with their husbands or their wives, the husband or wife. Okay. And they are not talking. They're holding, um, they're holding malice against their spouses two, three to six months or more, not sleeping in the bed with their husband or their wife, rebelling against their husband and or wife, have hatred or malice, anger against their children, anger against their loved ones. All the stuff is in their heart, unforgiveness, malice and strife, and then they're laying their hands on you. Remember the Bible says, if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven of your sins. So imagine someone who is actively holding an active hateful malice against somebody in their life for so many years. God has not forgiven them for one sin since that time because they've been holding that person in hatred and malice in their heart with hatred and malice in their heart. And now they're laying hands on you. Now they're laying hands on your family. Guys, laying hands is a rare privilege. No one should just be able to just touch you, lay hands on you all the time. Laying hands on your children. I personally think that you should not go up there and let no man be laying their hands on your wife. You should not be going up front or letting, letting no woman be laying her hands and praying over your husband. No, you go up there as a unit. And if, if the Lord has you to do that, guys, and if the Lord has placed it in your heart that these individuals are actually of God, holy, the Holy Spirit is 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 lord and they are obeying the voice of the holy spirit then guys no it will be you not 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 them laying hands a man laying hands on your wife a woman laying hands on your husband then your kids are somewhere over there getting their hands laid on by other people this is very important guys because there are a lot of people that live a life that is not holy it is not clean remember even when in the tabernacle even to even the person who was going to be handling the show bread, it was a something, it was a bread holy that was placed in the tabernacle in the holies of holies, guys. Um, not anybody was able to just go and change that out. Not any person was able to handle that, guys. And we're talking about bread here. They were hand selected. These individuals were hand selected. Who's going to even open the doors of the tabernacle were hand selected. So just imagine People had to be handpicked and sanctified to just go unlock the door of the tabernacle to switch out the bread on the altar. We should not just be allowing people to just lay hands on us simply because they say that they're a pastor and they're this person and they're that person. I don't need the power of the Lord to go through me. I don't need you to touch me for that to happen, you know? And I'm not saying that God cannot use people to do that because we know there are people that's been healed, been recovered. Um, but we must be vigilant and let the Holy Spirit lead you. And it really should not be something that's being done a lot and all the time. 
They're people who are like serial masturbators. And so you have this person that just finished doing whatever or throughout that week and now they're laying hands on your children. You have individuals that are, you know, abusive to their spouse and to their children laying hands on you. They have uh they have a hateful heart. They are very horrible to their employees. They are liars. They do a lot of different things and then they're laying hands on your children. They're laying hands on you. So guys, you have to just realize that our walk and our salvation, it's not something we should take lightly. It's not that we're living this paranoid life, but when you develop your relationship with the Lord, when you truly seek the Lord in prayer and in fasting and walking in obedience and, you know, you may mess up, but you're being your God is healing you and he's bringing you back to himself and you're going through the process of transformation and change. It is going to be easy to detect and to see what's there and what's not. And so, guys, I just want to talk to you all about that very briefly, the importance of that, guys. Well, you may say, well, if they're not going to lay hands on me, who's going to lay hands on me? Well, too often I find that husbands and wives, they're really overlooking one another. They take each other for granted. Sometimes they don't even respect each other. And they're just thinking that they have to go outside the home for God to move. They can't lay hands on their own children. They can't fast and pray because they've been programmed to think the power is at the church. The power is in certain individuals. But you don't know of what's within you already, what's within your spouse. Now, sometimes you may have a spouse that's just not serving the Lord or anything like that. You continue to pray for them, guys. But it doesn't mean you still have to be just, you know, blazing down to the church for someone to lay hands on you. Because I'm here to tell you there are very few people who are truly following and walking and walking in true holiness before the Lord. And you will find that when you set your mind that you're no longer walking in carnality and want to serve the Lord, your circle is going to get more slim. And you're going to find that most of your opposition, your ridicule, um, those who are going to tell you doing too much is going to be other believers. Because there are many carnal Christians. There are lots and lots of people who are in church. They're very compartmentalized. Okay, They're going to praise God in church and turn up as soon as church is out. And they live double lives and they think it's okay. So when you choose to live holy and acceptable, they say that you're weird and they don't want to be around you anymore. So this is why it's not common to really run into people who are holy and living for the Lord. So you must be very careful who you have putting their hands on you guys who are putting their hands on your children. You can lay hands on your own wife, lay hands on your own husband, go to one another and pray for one another the pro one another pray over your children ask the lord to give you teach you how to walk in that anointing and that power guys and i'm not saying again that people cannot be used by god to lay hands but they're few and far between who are truly following and operating in the holy spirit and not another spirit they're people that when the Lord reveals their fruit to you, you see that they're cussing. They're completely different when they're another and they're in a different uh, atmosphere or different, um, a different setting. Nasty attitudes. Don't let that person lay hands on you. Don't sit there. Don't sit at that table. Don't even sit under that ministry, guys. Pay attention to what's around you. The fruit is not only in what they speak, guys, but also... What what are they going up in that alt in that pulpit in that altar? You know, there's so much skin, booty, legs, thighs, uh, genital prints, just all over. This is supposed to be natural. No, guys, it's a spirit of lust in that church. A spirit of lust, a spirit of carnality that's in there. You've got to have enough knowing within you to tell your family, wheels up, we're out of here. Stop going to these church with these half naked praise team people. Toes and shiny knees and thighs and, and jiggly butts going up in the pulpit and the pastor with the general prints and all the stuff going on. And, you know, just it's, you know, come on now. Everybody's wearing toddler tops to show off their muscles. Guys, you you got to see beyond this. People tell you, oh, you're thinking too much. Nope. The Lord says, buy their fruit. Believe him. 
Believe the Lord when he tells you that. Don't believe what they're, how well of a sermon they preach, how accurate of a pro prophetic word. Oh, they were able to tell you there's, you have a green tomato about to rot on the second shelf in your Frigidaire fridge. You have also a glass of milk next to it. And oh, I see, I see the prunes in the door. You got to change out the prunes. The expiration date was yesterday. Come on, who cares? <laughs> you know, there is a false prophet that can tell you that. That demon's been in your house, looked in the fridge. There's a prune that's rotting. That's nothing to be, you know, come on. It's really not. So guys, regardless of what their gifts are, as we are seeing and hearing, guys, there's lots of people who had gifts and whoa, they were just, they taught lessons and sermons and exhorted us to tears and things are not what it seems. So what it is, guys, the Lord tells you, pay attention to their speech. Pay attention to their actions. Pay attention to what they have on. Now, when someone is a babe in Christ and they're young in Christ, there are certain things you're still learning. But I'm here to tell you that you will be able to see the fruit. And that's what the Lord is telling you to pay attention to. Pay attention to the fruit. Be careful in allowing people to just lay their hands on you because there's a lot of people who are not yielded to the Lord. They're not listening to God. They're not obeying the Lord, but and they're doing a lot of things. They're wife beaters, children abusers. They curse their children out, disrespect their kids, you know, do a lot of stuff. As I said, the biggest thing, malice, strife. They, ha they hate somebody in the church. They hate someone in their family. They are mistreating one another at home, disrespecting one another at home. You know, usurping or or discrediting or or overriding each other's authority with their children. And then they come to the church to put their hands on you. And don't let that happen. It's going to take discernment, guys, in these last days to really see what what's out there, who's out there. And it's important that you are vigilant. Don't let people say you're looking too much. You're not paying attention. The word of God tells us to be vigilant. It tells us we're supposed to be vigilant. We are supposed to be careful. We're supposed to remove ourselves. We're supposed to discern. We're supposed to perceive what's there. And then act according as the Holy Spirit lays it in our heart. All right, guys. Peace.